Throughout the history of film, there have been tens of thousands of movies that almost came to be, but didn't. And there's one in particular that I've found to be the most fascinating. And this is its story. On January 18, 1964, a movie called The Incredible Mr. Limpet hit theaters. The film takes place in 1941 America and centers around a man named Henry Limpet. Henry, played by the great Don Knotts, is a meek, nerdy bookkeeper who's obsessed with fish. He dreams of being a war hero, but is deemed unfit to serve. He feels unfulfilled in life and wishes to become a fish. And his wish comes true. He becomes a fucking fish. And as a fish, a lot happens to him. He befriends a crab named Krusty, falls in love with another fish named Ladyfish, and uses his echolocation to assist the U.S. Navy with locating and destroying Nazi U-boats, which leads to him becoming the war hero he always wanted to be. With its main character appearing as a cartoon fish for a large chunk of its runtime, The Incredible Mr. Limpet was one of the first live-action movies to feature really extensive animated scenes. At first, it wasn't an immediate box office smash. According to Knotts, it gained steam as time went on, and ended up becoming kind of a classic or at least enough of one for Warner Brothers to announce in October of 1996 that Leo Benvenuti and Steve Rudnick, the writers behind Space Jam and The Santa Claus, were hired to write a remake of it. The script they went on to write shared the overall story beats of the original, but would still come with plenty of changes. Their version of the Mr. Limpet story took place in present-day America, which meant that Limpet and the U.S. Navy weren't fighting Nazis, but rather a more modern threat. Another major aspect of the film that Rudnick and Benvenuti set out to update was its humor. By 1996's standards, the original film's humor was rather stale, so the writing duo made sure to add a lot more comedy into the remake that would appeal to modern viewers, young and old. Another change worth noting is that Mr. Limpet's first name was now Larry, instead of Henry. Like the original, the film was going to be a live-action animation hybrid, but this time around, animators were going to create the film's underwater aspects with CGI. In February of 1998, after months of negotiating, the remake found its Mr. Limpet. Jim Carrey. And Steve Oderkirk, the writer and director of Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, signed on with him to rewrite and direct the movie. The studio paid Carrey a whopping $25 million to star in the film. And because they were paying so much for Carrey, the studio wanted to get their money's worth out of him, and decided that, if they were going to pay that much for Carrey to appear in the film, he was going to be on screen throughout the whole thing. So they told character designers working on the film to make Mr. Limpet's fish form look as close to Jim Carrey as possible. This eventually led to the fish form of Mr. Limpet having the actual face of Jim Carrey. Carrey then had to do extensive motion capture tests, where he, with his trademark rubbery face, made a wide range of facial expressions, so animators could put them onto the CGI fish that would have a CGI version of his face. In the fall of 1998, Filming locations were being scouted, and the live-action portions of the movie were slated to get filmed in early 1999. And while physical production had yet to begin, a lot of the movie's underwater elements were past the concepting phase and were now getting realized. Around $10 million was spent on animation tests, for which animators created underwater environments and sea creatures. Here's a test that was done for Krusty. You are a bum. The main focus of the animation testing, however, was getting to the bottom of how a talking fish with Jim Carrey's human face would look best. At the time, CGI had never been used to create a realistic human face. But with powerful technology and a lot of money at their disposal, animation teams took on the task, and at least two Mr. Limpet tests were made, where a fish with Jim Carrey's face moved throughout underwater environments. And by scavenging the World Wide Web, I not only found a malleable clay model of Carrie's fish head that animators working on the tests could reference, I also found snippets of the two Mr. Limpet tests. Without further ado, here are parts of the first test. Let's slow that down. The available footage only shows a few glimpses of Mr. Limpet's face, but the other test footage I found gives us a much better look. Once again, let's slow things down. In March of 1999, Steve Oderkirk stepped down from the project 
due to the reportedly high-tension creative differences he had with the studio. Warner Brothers then set their sights on Brad Bird, who had recently completed The Iron Giant as a potential replacement director. But upon seeing the test footage, he was terrified and quickly lost interest. And in July of 1999, Carrie also left the project. But the film still had a pulse. In April of 2000, Warner Brothers hired Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill creator Mike Judge to direct and co-write the remake. And Robin Williams, Chris Rock, Mike Myers, and Adam Sandler were in consideration for the lead role. Filming for this attempt was set to begin in early 2001. The remake would then have no updates for about nine years, until June of 2009, when it was announced that Enchanted director Kevin Lima was attached to direct. Lima made some headway with developing his vision of the remake. He collaborated with artists on making storyboards and animation tests before quietly exiting the project. Then in March of 2011, Richard Linklater had entered negotiations to direct the film and officially hopped on board in January of 2014. This time around, Zach Galifianakis was attached to play Mr. Limpet. Pre-production for this Mr. Limpet remake was in full swing. Artists were drawing characters and storyboards, and a slew of other big names had joined its supporting cast. But in August of 2014, Linklater left the project to focus on making Everybody Wants Some. And ever since then, the remake has been dead in the water. After all been said and done, the studio wound up spending over $100 million on the Mr. Limpet remake, without it ever starting principal photography. And while it doesn't seem like the remake will ever see the light of day, it's interesting to look at the assets that were made for it and wonder what could have been. It is. Oh.